Morning everyone, my name's Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. I'm going to do another piece a little bit like this one. Um, so this painting was a couple of videos ago on YouTube. Um, it started out as a normal Dutch pour, it went terribly wrong several times, but I managed to, I think, save it, hopefully, um, by adding these little um, purple flowers. Um, and I've had a lot of positive feedback about this painting. So this wasn't what I intended, it didn't go right, didn't go well, but actually the results I've had a lot of positive feedback about and a lot of um, comments saying actually it looks good, it, it works, the flowers look really good. Um, so I'm going to try and deliberately now do a painting similar to that. I'm going to do a different base, it's going to all be Dutch pour um, consistency paints. I'm going to do um, a multicoloured base somehow, I'm not sure how yet. Um, and the base will be, it's going to have some green in because I want it to look a bit like leaves, greens and neutral colours. And then I just really want to do red and gold. I'm going to add a few other shades but red and gold um, maybe to look like roses or um, not really sure what yet, um, but I'm really excited to try and repeat this, but deliberately this time. Um, so let me show you the colour scheme I've got. So these are the base colours I'm going to use. So um, Pearl White by De La Rowney, three Pebio Studio Acrylics colours, the Iridescent Green Yellow, Payne's Grey and Iridescent Silver, and then um, this one here, another De La Rowney, Oxide of Chromium Green. So I've got a little bit of contrast with there and I'm not going to add too much of the greens. I want it to be more neutral. Um, I was thinking about using black, but black is so harsh. I thought if I use the Payne's Grey, it's just going to add a slight, slight more warmth to the colour. Then for the flowers, um, Montmartre Magenta, Montmartre um, Gold, Amsterdam um, Persian Rose, um, I've got some orange, which is a Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Orange Yellow, and then this lovely one, um, Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic um, Alizarin Crimson, um, which is just a lovely, rich, warm, ready colour. So um, I was slightly concerned about the, the red and the green, because obviously if they do mix, they make brown. So that's why I've just decided to add a bit of orange, a bit of pink to it as well, just to, to create these lovely warm flowers. Um, so the canvas I'm using, it's already here, it's a 40 by 40 centimetre canvas. Um, so yeah, I'm all ready, let's get started. Right, I'm ready to start. Um, so I haven't really got a plan for how I'm going to get these colours onto the canvas. Um, I think I might just randomly pour them on and then blow them around with a hairdryer. I don't really want a pattern to it. I just want um, a general blend, I think. I, I'm really not sure. So I'm just going to, I'm just gonna, in fact, I won't I'll take the nozzle off so I can pour it in slightly bigger and with, with more flow. I think I'm just going to just pour it on without any real pattern or reason. See what happens. So that's some pearl white. Silver, Payne's Grey, in fact I'm going to keep the nozzle on for the Payne's Grey because I guess I actually want less Payne's Grey because it's so dark. And then the Oxide Green. iridescent green this effect really like that absolutely love it 
um, just not enough paint. So let's just put some more on. And as you can see, I can just keep adding bits, adding more. It's, it, I guess it's a little bit more wasteful because I've got quite a lot of drips around the edge. But wow, it's amazing. To be honest, even that on your wall, I think looks quite nice. Wow, I think I might have just discovered something. Right, I think there's going to be lots more of these coming up. So I've got a few cells, which wasn't intended, but they look nice. I'm just bursting all the air bubbles. I'm just going to soften this line here of Payne's Grey. It's just a bit too stark. There, that's better. Right, and now I'm just going to go around all the edges because it's very drippy and just dab in, um, you'll see if I pull this up yet, yeah, you can see lots of little um, gaps there. So I'm just gonna go and fill in all these gaps and then I'll be back. I've just dabbed all of the little um, gaps at the side and then I'm just gonna take a stick and just run that along the edge because there's now lots of drips. Because this base, there's, there's, it's such a thick base, there's lots of paint, lots of drips. So if you don't pull the, if you don't remove the drips like this, these drips will just keep pulling the paint, will thin it on the sides and just keep pulling the paint over. And I don't want that. I want this paint now to stay still, to stay exactly like it is. Uh, one other thing to mention, all my base colours here are mixed with UK Fluoratrol, which is called Oatrol. But all of these design colours I've mixed with Flood Flower Troll which is from America so I'll put the recipes in the description of this video. Right in some ways I don't want to actually add anything I really like it as it is but that that would that would be pointless really. Um, I wanted quite a chaotic picture like the last one because I really liked that. So this is there yeah, I'm nervous now so I'm going to put down the red first and what I'm hoping is if I can put enough down and I blow it out, it's not going to blend too much with the paint that's underneath because I want to try and keep these flowers now on the top. Um, so let's have a go. So I'm just going to do little puddles. Let's just do one, see what happens. And then if it works, I can then I'll just do lots at one in one go. Not lots. There won't be as many flowers on this piece compared to the last one. it's worked so there is some green showing through but it's that bright green so it, I don't really think it's muddied right that's quite a big flower so what I think I'm going to do is maybe a couple of other big flowers but then try and do some smaller ones as well so to get a smaller flower I just simply need less paint so let's do another big flower here And let's go here.
Right, considering those second lot of flowers were supposed to be smaller, um, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> so I'm now going to try and just there's just a few gaps that I think could do with a little bit more. So do a little flower here, but that will actually run off over the edge. Um, the same here. I think maybe here a very small one, maybe here and here. So I've got to be really careful with the amount of paint I'm putting on now. Because if I just put too much, all the flowers will get too close to each other. And I don't want them, I don't particularly want them to overlap. I want them to stay separate. Wow, this is so cool. What a crazy, intense, chaotic painting, but I love it. I love this base. It really is nice and bright. I just love how all the colours blend and swirl. Really happy with that. These flowers are insane. They are amazing. Um, so these to me look pretty light much like a bloom so the bloom technique now the bloom technique i haven't actually um got to grips with yet i haven't researched it i haven't worked out how to do it i haven't tried blooms yet but i think these are quite bloom like so i think i think now might be the time to start really looking at how to create proper blooms right I think I'm done with the flowers. My only last thought now is I do I do any of my little swirly bits, my twiddly bits. Do I do anything just to pull all the flowers together slightly? These cells are absolutely insane. They are gorgeous. I cannot tell you how happy I am with this. I, I was so worried about greens and reds and pinks, but wow, what a combination. There's no muddying. You can see the greens coming through the flowers, but it's not muddying. There is no brown here. I think I'm going to do just a few twiddly, little, little twiddly bits just to fill in, just to give a bit of detail to the, the little areas of that are plain. I'm wondering about actually dipping my paintbrush in so, for example, if I dipped my paintbrush into the into the pink, does that work? Yeah, I think it does. I just cannot believe how bright and bold and, and cheerful this is. Um, wow. This is so cool. Right, let me show you. Just look at these, look at these cells and this lacing and all that sparkle. The whole thing is going to be sparkly. And that green popping through the flower, it's amazing. Wow. I'm so happy with these colours. I'm really glad I added the pink and the orange to the red. I think just the red on its own wouldn't have looked as nice. I'm just, I just really, yeah, I really like all of the colours I've put on the flowers. So you've got some Payne's grey poking through there. You've got some, um, some of the iridescent greenish yellow. I definitely found these edge flowers more difficult um, because I guess there's less paint. I, I, yeah, they, they didn't work quite as well. But look at that lacing, those colours. I am so inspired by this to do more, to do different colour schemes, to try this again with different different colours. You, you know, all the flowers don't have to be the same. You could do flowers that are all different colours. Oh, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, yeah, and I like the swirly bits. I don't love the swirly bits. But I think it does just draw the painting uh, together a little bit. Um, 
so yeah so I'll be back when it's dry so here it is finished and dry um I love it I absolutely love it I I'm so happy it's for, for, for what I wanted for me it's worked brilliantly really pleased with it um the background the base is amazing look at the multicolored green silver white um I guess my only comment about the base is it may be a bit dark, a bit bright, maybe. I should have added more white to, to make it a little bit softer. But the fact that it is so bright and intense just makes this such a powerful, strong coloured painting. Um, let me take you in and show you all the amazing cells, the amazing details. The flowers are so pretty. You can see every colour in them. The pinks, the oranges, the reds. Um, I'm really happy with the way that these little swirls um, ended up. Just, I'm just blown away by them. Absolutely love them. Um, as with the previous flower painting, the flower garden. Oh, I'm going to link that by the way in the description. I'll put the description in the description uh, text. I'll put the link to the previous video with the uh, with the flowers. Um, but as with that painting, um, I've just outlined the edges of these flowers. The outlines were pretty good on this one, better than the last one, but I just thought they needed a little bit more distinction between the flowers and the background, so I'm really pleased I've done that. Um, one of the best bits is the shine on this piece. Can you see? Just the iridescence is amazing. So you've got the iridescence of the orange in the flowers, but the iridescence of the... It's, I think it's mostly the yellow-green in the base is just brilliant really really happy with it um so there it is great please let me know what you think leave me any comments you want to thank you so so much for watching um and i hope you're all having a lovely long bank holiday weekend bye